Nine o'clock, black sky, gray cloud. The street below Megan Ward's window gleamed ghostly pale after a sudden shower. Cars crammed the length of the street, jostling for space, some with their near side wheels on the curb, narrowing the gap between the facing yellow brick houses. A man stood on the opposite curb. He was tall, powerfully built, the trapezius muscles of his neck so thick that his head seemed to be jammed down onto his shoulders. He'd been watching the house for 15 minutes, while Megan watched him from the darkness of her room, her breathing shallow, fearful. Some youths approached, heading for the pubs in Lark Lane, loud and full of swagger. But as they passed the man, they fell silent, taking care to give him space, avoiding his eye. What did he want from her? She sighed, and it caught on the outbreath. You know what he wants, and you brought this on yourself. Hello and welcome to Crime Writers, just one of our brand new, short, unique entertainment programmes here on Legal TV. I'm Rachel Harvey-Jones and in the studio today with me is author Margaret Murphy and it's a pleasure to have her here. Margaret Murphy is the author of highly acclaimed psychological crime novels. Her first, Goodnight My Angel, was shortlisted for the first Blood Award for debut crime fiction and her novels are now published in both the UK, the US and also translated across Europe. Margaret, it's lovely to have you in the studio. Well, thanks for inviting me. And absolute pleasure. Now today we'll be talking about Now You See Me and as a person who wouldn't normally read crime, no crime novels, as you can imagine, having to read several crime novels now at, at the beginning was slightly daunting. Now I'm absolutely hooked. I absolutely love this. Oh, uh, before we delve into this, tell me how you, you sort of started writing uh, novels, in particularly crime. Well, I, I didn't get into crime until quite late on. I'd written three novels that have never been published, in fact, right. and two were techno thrillers and one was uh, a supernatural. Yeah. And it was really when I started writing a crime novel that it became, I think I found my niche. Um, and I, even then I wasn't convinced. It was my agent who informed me that I was actually writing crime. <laughs> I was convinced it was going to be another supernatural novel, but she convinced me, and she was right. Right, and that's what, so that's obviously steered you down the path of yeah, crime writing. Well, I think the important thing that she noticed, I think, throughout the novels that I'd written before was the strong psychological element. Yes. And crime fiction does lend itself to that. Absolutely. And I have to say, having read quite a few now, I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed this, and I was fortunate enough because this is available in all audiobook as well um, and I had the unabridged version which was great so I, I got to hear every single uh, the word that you'd written uh, what was great about it I prefer I now know that I prefer the psychological um, oh, crime right. novels so that's interesting so I've yeah. learned something about myself um, do you actually I was, I was slightly there's a very famous investigative journalist in America whose name escapes me who often sets up little plots to, to get himself publicity. Uh, are the characters in your books actually based on anybody, in particular anybody you know? Or I found that with my novels there are people who find their way in. Okay. There, is, there is one character, and it's usually the minor characters actually, there's one character in both of the Liverpool based novels, mm. that's, that's Now You See Me and The Dispossessed, called Tunstall. And he's kind of based on a police officer I actually met. He's got uh -huh. a broad Wisniewian accent. He's very physically big. He's a rugby player and uh, asks the daft questions that everybody <laughs> else is frightened to ask, but actually helps the investigation along in that way. Right. Um, so in that way, yes, you do get some people who sort of appear fully formed. But generally speaking, I think it's an amalgam. You kind of absorb things and you recreate character from people that you've met and from conversations that you've had. Absolutely. And how long generally does it take you to write your novels? Well, I used to say that, you know, I don't have children and these are my babies. <laughs> and they used to take about nine months for the first draft. Um, but I think it's got a bit longer recently, possibly because I'm more exacting upon myself as yes. a writer. Uh, it's probably about a year now from beginning to end in first draft. I suppose from your first novel up to now, you set your standards higher and higher, so that's maybe why it takes yeah, longer. I like to. And I did, actually did an MA in writing, sort of four books in. Right. And people said, you're mad, you're already published, <laughs> what do you want to do an MA for? Um, but I've learned so much on that, that, you know, about the writing craft and about 
um, the importance of developing characters as real people and dialogue and all the rest of it. So that it's, you know, it's something that I think um, a lot of people can gain from. Yes, absolutely. Well, it's an absolutely fantastic read now, you see. I mean, if you are looking for a fantastic read, then go and get this. We're talking to uh, Margaret uh, Murphy in the studio today. Now, I've read the book, and I have to say, I, I'm, not, I'm not into crime novels at all, but I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, if you could sum up the story, because I'll probably go off on, you know, I'll go off on a tangent, you know what I'm like. If you could sort of give us a quick synopsis, tease people, uh, tease our viewers, our legal TV viewers, but don't give too much away. Well, it actually stems from something that happened to me on the internet. I joined a couple of internet forums and I'm not sure if you know what flaming is on the internet. It's when you get a really violent response to something that you've said in, in all innocence yes. from somebody. And the response was from a girl who said that uh, you boys are all the same. You're only interested in... They're discussing story. Yeah. You're only interested in violence and you're not interested in romance or character. And that's so much the antithesis of what I'm about as a writer. She didn't know I was a writer. Yes. That I thought, well, this is really interesting because you can actually reinvent yourself on the yeah. internet. And when I looked into what was going on and, and what kind of fraud and you know, internet crime is going on. From a very basic level, it may be something as simple as somebody selling you something on eBay and then not delivering. Mm. And then it goes up to, um, you know, the huge scams that cost hundreds of millions of pounds per year for the British public yeah. alone, never yeah, mind across well, the world. Yes. So I, th I just wanted to ex explore that and to explore character and um, the identity of individuals and this is someone who actually plays with identity well you said I'll tell you something I said don't give too much away you certainly haven't but we've given you um, a, a little insight there sadly we're running out of time oh. time flies when you're having fun <laughs> what I will ask you to do is if you may if I may is, uh, if you could sign our book for us and add it into our, our rather salubrious bookcase yeah, you've got quite a collection Yes, now. we're getting quite a collection. I'm yeah. very well read at the moment, I have to say. We've been talking to Margaret Murphy. Now you see me. If you want an absolutely fantastic read, then you know what you've got to do. Go out and get it because it is fantastic. And it is available for all you busy people out there. It is available in audiobook as well. Margaret, it's an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much. Thanks, Rachel. Uh, look out for more crime writers here on Legal TV.